September had yet to finish. And like every morning, the day of Annette began with the coffee. That day, while 20,000 kilometers away, some government was approving an unjust law, Annette woke up upset again. Exactly two years ago at this time, she was haggling camels with a merchant in Cairo, disguised as a British officer, uniform, polished shoes, and a fake mustache. Now, she was still in her pajamas in front of a cold coffee, about to put sugar for the second time. Like every morning, she was completely immersed in her thoughts that revolved around one fixed point, the guitar. Ah, but maybe I should take a step back. He must know that every night, Annette was dreaming of a guitar. The same guitar, with a stain in the shape of an Indian. The dreams were different every time, but the guitar was always present. At first it was fun, then she felt flattered, then she thought... To everything there is a limit. Once it's okay, but every night... Convinced that the dreams dealt with a repressed vocation to music, she took guitar lessons. But the dream remained. Her psychoanalyst had just left the Jungian track, and they started to follow the deficit of care theory. Rainer was... but... Uh, Wagner was born. Uh, I see food as a, as a great way to... as a great metaphor for... The psychoanalyst was a good friend of her guitar teacher. This dream had become an obsession. What was it about the guitar and that stain in the shape of an Indian? Why her? And then, was it real? Perhaps it was an ancestor who was trying to communicate something from beyond. Or a premonition of the apocalyptic end of the world. Or a coded message sent telepathically by some extraterrestrial form of life. She could not stop thinking about it. Every so often she wondered what if, from one day to another, she would have stopped dreaming. So, without a reason. Probably she would have felt alone. The thought of the guitar kept her company during the day. It had almost become like a point of reference. After all this time, Annette was starting to lose hope of finding a solution to the enigma, and was afraid of having to live with the dream of the guitar for the rest of her life. There was only one thing she feared more than that, the locust. It's the fact that they jump all over the place, she thought. Siegfried usually couldn't think and play the guitar at the same time. But that morning, a girl had stopped to listen to him, and she seemed so interested that he began to take an interest as well. It must be about the guitar, he thought. He had found it just recently, but already he felt very attached. He especially liked its aesthetics, its gentle form, its slightly faded color. That spot close to the sound hole reminded him of the hippie gesture of peace. He felt good playing it. Somehow, he felt that that guitar meant a lot to him. Siegfried was born on a Sunday. His family have been watchmakers for generation, and he himself grew up between arms and gears. At 18, he had already graduated with honors at the country's most prestigious university. You are the promise of quantum physics, said the principal. You are late for dinner, said his father. And it was there that Siegfried decided to abandon everything and leave to devote himself entirely to his two hobbies, playing the guitar and collecting subway tickets from all over the world.
Mine is definitely an eventful life. Thought the guitar. I don't like to sit still. I like to travel. I like to be played by different people. I like to think of the clouds, the sky, the moon. I like to find myself in the middle of the action and proudly show my scar shaped like a heron. I like to sit at home with friends, but I always know the right moment to leave. The last time I spent at Marin's house, her boyfriend used to write love songs and he played me in the evening before going to sleep next to her. When he left, Marion was no longer able to share the flat with me. She told me that she needed her space, and one day she took me for a walk. Tell me where I'm 